Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. We are back today with another comparison video. So I suppose the question is, which is the better trail running shoe, the Salomon Ultra Glide or the Endorphin Trail from Socony? Well, there's only one way to find out. Fight, 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 fight. Or we could just do a review. Just before we get stuck into the review guys, I just wanted to mention it's definitely worth staying tuned till the end. The channel has just hit a massive milestone. So to say thank you to all you guys at home for your support, watching the videos, commenting on the videos, which we really appreciate, we are running a Run For Adventure giveaway. So stay tuned to the end, get in the mix guys to have the chance of winning lots of Run For Adventure goodies. But let's get back to the review. And in today's video, we are taking a look at two trail running shoes that have been built to handle the long stuff. So they both offer good levels of comfort and cushioning for distance, good fit in uppers, and a really high level of traction on the outsole to handle any terrain, any time of the year. The Endorphin Trail retails in the UK for £155, whereas the Salomons come in for a slightly more affordable £130. Weight-wise, the Ultra Glides are 298 grams in a men's UK 9.5, and the Endorphins come in at a slightly heftier 345 grams in the same size. Heel offset, very similar in both shoes. So the Ultra Glides run off a six mil offset, whereas the Saucony shoes run off a 4mm offset. And when it comes down to the midsoles, you can see both shoes have a deeply cushioned rocker geometry. So that is a bit of spec about these two ultra distance trail running shoes, but we're gonna break this video down into three sections. So we're gonna talk about upper construction first, then we're gonna go through midsole performance and grip while I've been out on the trails. And then finally, we're gonna wrap it up with a quick conclusion. And that's where I'm gonna talk about which shoe I've preferred to run in and why. So you can see both uppers have quite a lot going on in them. So lots of different fabrics and materials used, lots of different overlays, just to make those uppers nice and durable when you're putting in the distance. Both uppers are fitting my foot shape really well. I felt really locked in and dialed into that midfoot and I've had no lateral slippage or movement in either shoe. This is something super important for me in my trail running shoes, especially if I'm gonna be running that shoe sort of at speed in technical areas. Funnily enough, I think both shoes come up a little bit short when we talk about sizing and I could have probably gone up to a UK 10 instead of sticking with my normal UK 9.5, but I've had no issues with irritation, rubbing, blisters or anything like that. Both uppers have been extremely comfortable and I've run a good distance in both shoes. So. I used the Salomon Ultra Glides when I did the Serpent Trail 50K in some pretty challenging muddy wet conditions. The shoe handled it all really well. And my longest training run in the Endorphins was around 24 miles. So both shoes have had a thorough testing when it comes to distance. Personally, the only drawback when it comes to the uppers and it goes on in both shoes is that they do run quite warm just because there's so much going on in that upper construction. So I think with a little bit of stripping back, they would perform a little bit Bit better the Salomon shoe a little bit less padding in that tongue and around that ankle collar and just a little bit less of everything when it comes to the endorphin trail and I can't talk about upper construction without mentioning the terribly designed and placed tongue pocket on the Salomon shoe come on guys you must have known that the laces come up very high, the pocket comes down low, and it makes it really awkward once you've got them laces pulled down tight to get that lace in the pocket. I'm hoping that this will be something that's addressed on the next version of the shoe, and just a thought, maybe have that pocket opening on the top of the tongue. It would make it a lot easier to stow that lace away. So we have 
a couple of issues in both of the uppers of these trail running shoes. So we're going to call it a tie when it comes down to upper construction. Next to discuss is midsole and outsole performance. And you can see that both of these shoes sit in that very popular category at the moment of deeply cushioned trail running shoes. Who would have thought it that we'd have so many trail running shoes with deep cushioned and very soft midsoles to choose from? So even though those midsoles are trying to achieve the same goal, I personally think that they feel and perform quite differently. So like I mentioned earlier in the review, they've both got that rocker geometry and they both felt great when it comes to that aspect of the construction. They both feel very, very efficient when you're sort of hitting those slightly slower tempos that you'd hit in a long training run or when you're running an ultra. The biggest difference comes when we talk about the cushioning compounds used in those midsoles. So Saucony have gone for their very successful Power Run PB compound. Uh, this is a compound that's used in the super popular Endorphin Pro and Endorphin Speed road shoes, whereas Salomon have put in their new Surge Foam compound. So both shoes, both midsoles have been very comfortable on all the terrains that I've run them on. And I've been really surprised with how connected and how stable I felt underfoot, even with this deep stack of cushioning. Now, that isn't always the case in trail shoes like this. And sometimes you can feel pretty unstable just because you've lost too much pro perception and ground feel. I'm happy to say that's not the case in either of these shoes. But when we talk about midsole performance, I think the Ultra Glides just about creep out on top for me. Where Saucony have wrapped this Power Run PB compound in this mesh to sort of protect it from trail debris, but also to offer a little bit more lateral and medial stability, I think that compound has lost a little bit of pop, and I'm a massive fan of Power Run PB compound, so lost a little bit of energy return when you compare it to the road running shoes with the same compound in the midsole. Don't get me wrong, it's still very comfortable, but I was just maybe expecting a little bit more from it. Whereas that new Surge compound in the Salomon shoe, it feels nice and plush underfoot. It still feels like it's returning a bit of energy, but it's not too soft. So you still feel super responsive and dialed into the trails. And even when I've been running faster in technical areas, that midsole has performed well. When it comes down to the important topic of grip, both shoes again have performed pretty well. I'm a big fan of this power track rubber from Saucony. Uh, it's never let me down on any surface. The lugs on the Endorphin Trail are half a mil shallower than what you'd get, say, on a Peregrine 11, but they've still offered great levels of grip and traction, and I felt very confident underfoot. Unfortunately, that isn't always the case when it comes to the rubber compounds that Salomon put on some of their trail running shoes. In the past, I have found them a little bit inconsistent, and I can be out running somewhere on the coast path in wet conditions, running along rocky area, gripping that rock, gripping that rock, and then all of a sudden I slip on a different type of rock. So um, they have let me down in the past when it comes to consistency of grip. Happy to say, not the case with this MA Contagrip compound on the Ultra Glide. Uh, it's been really consistent on everything I've run it on, and I have put this shoe through some challenging conditions, whether it be deep boggy mud or wet rocky trails, and it's come up trumps every time. So the grip seems to be a lot more consistent now it's using this new MA compound. So the outsoles on both of these trail shoes have actually performed pretty well on everything that I've run them on. So the last topic we're gonna to discuss is performance. And if I'm honest, when I first took the Endorphin Trail out for a run, I was pretty disappointed with the performance. And if you've seen our first impressions video, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Out. It just wasn't the shoe I expected it to be, especially when it came with the endorphin name. You know, I wanted that lightweight, exciting trail running shoe that you put on and all you want to do is go out and hit the trails hard. Similar to the sort of feeling I get from the endorphin speed when I put it on and go and do a road session. And I just didn't get that feeling from the shoe. But if I'm honest, I think I was pretty harsh in that first impressions uh, review. And I've actually grown to enjoy the shoe a lot more now I've put Put more mileage in it. Don't get me wrong, it could definitely do with losing 30 or 40 grams and they could make this upper construction a bit lighter and maybe a bit more breathable. But I have found myself reaching for the shoe a lot more on those longer, slower runs when I'm gonna be running across a big mix of different trains and maybe a bit of tarmac because the shoe actually does that quite well. The midsole compound was definitely firmer than I was expecting, but it still offers a nice, comfortable ride underfoot on most terrains. But I'm always gonna come back to the weight of the 
shoe. With the Endorphin Trail weighing in at just under 350 grams in a men's UK 9.5, it is a hefty shoe, it is heavy. Even though when you put it on and take it for a run, it doesn't feel like it's heavy, but you are still lugging that weight around. And we gotta remember, it is 50 grams heavier than the Ultra Glides. Speaking of the Salomon shoe, and it's performed really well again on a big mix of different terrains and underfoot conditions. Hasn't really let me down on anything. We've got that nice soft surge compound in the midsole, offering you that really good balance between comfort and cushioning, but also trail connection. We've got a pro feel film in that midsole again to offer you a bit of underfoot protection from any sharp rocks or things sticking out the ground and then we've got to talk about that really well engineered rocker geometry in the midsole that makes the shoe feel very efficient when you're running long so a really good shoe for long distance training runs or ultra marathons and it really has given me that sort of well-rounded trail running performance as always for me the Salomon upper has fitted my foot shape really well so really locked into that midfoot dialed in and connected to the shoe so I feel really responsive and very stable running in technical areas, even with this depth of cushioning under my foot. The one thing I will mention, because I keep hearing people say it, is that at last, the Ultra Glide, a Salomon shoe with a nice wide toe box. I kind of disagree with that. I'm very narrow in foot shape and this shoe fits me perfectly. So uh, if you're looking for a Salomon shoe with lots of wiggle room and a nice wide toe box because you've got a wide foot shape, this isn't any wider than any standard Salomon shoe in my eyes. So uh, all in all, really enjoy my time in both shoes and I can see myself putting a lot more mileage in these out on the trails. But I think it's about time that we wrap this comparison video up with a quick conclusion. Both shoes actually have some good features, but they also have a couple of flaws. What with this very oddly designed lace pocket in the tongue of the Ultra Glides and an upper that is over-engineered and runs quite hot on the Endorphin Trail. But when you strip all that back, both shoes have handled all the long runs that I've done in really, really well. And fundamentally, that is what they're designed for, to run distance. But I can't ignore the fact that the Ultra Glide is 25 pounds cheaper and a massive 50 grams lighter than the Endorphin Trail. So it has to take top spot. So if you are looking for a trail running shoe that's designed to go long, you like a deep level of cushioning in that midsole, and you run on a big mix of terrain and you do that all year round, then I definitely recommend checking out the Ultra Glide from Salomon. That does come with a bit of a caveat because that is if you can find any stock. The shoe was very popular when it was first launched and I don't think Salomon made enough shoes, so it's been sold out for quite a long time. I actually spoke to Salomon the other week and they're not sure when they're gonna have any physical stock. So good luck with the hunting and hopefully they'll have some soon. But that is a wrap on another comparison review video at Run For Adventure. Really hope you enjoyed it guys, really hope you found it helpful. Now, I'm sure there was something else that I was supposed to mention. Oh yeah, we've just gone past 20,000 subscribers at the channel, a massive milestone for Run For Adventure. And we just wanna say a massive thank you to everyone who supported the channel, whether it be subscribing to the channel, watching our videos, leaving a comment, hitting that like button, whatever it is, we really appreciate it, guys. So to show our appreciation to all of you at home, we are gonna be running a giveaway on this video. So Up For Grabs is a big bundle of Run For Adventure goodies. So we've got a nice selection of our funky, very cool looking multi-wraps, but also you're gonna to get to choose a hoodie of your choice in your size. So you could go for the Run For Adventure logo hoodie, or you could choose the Believe and Achieve hoodie, and you never know, we might throw in a few little mystery prizes as well. All you need to do to have a chance of winning is like this video and comment down below. Then go along to Instagram and follow Run For Adventure, but also like and tag in two of your running friends under this picture on our Instagram feed. Then you'll automatically be entered into the prize giveaway. And we're gonna be drawing one lucky winner out at random on the 1st of November. So get in the mix guys, because then you could be having a nice nice bundle of Run For Adventure goodies heading your way. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the content that we're making at the channel, then you can support us through our Patreon page. By becoming a patron of the channel, obviously it's really appreciated, but it also opens up a world of Run For Adventure perks, from exclusive Patreon content to exclusive merchandise, 
also a discount code for our merch store and a very exclusive Patreon window sticker. So I've left a link in the description below for our Patreon page if you want to support the channel that way. But for now guys, thanks for watching. It's always appreciated. We will see you back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. Any type of terrain, any type of the year. Any type of the year. Ah, time of the year, Lloyd. It was so good up till then. Fluffed it right at the end. <laughs> <laughs>